Welcome back with a look at what's trending today. Well, throughout the show, really, we've teased a national holiday that I'm sure many of you are celebrating, maybe later today, maybe right now, Na National Drink Wine Day. So, <laughs> I swear it's the last time I tease it. Kara has a lot more on that right after this, but why not pair your glass with 42 foods you need to try before you die? That's right, you heard me correctly. The gorgeous aesthetic of at Insider Food on Twitter is back with another cheesy, bread-filled dessert dream of a video. It's, I mean, come on. What? Dip it, honey, dip it. It's a follow-up to another foodie vid they shared back in 2018. They also post legendary eats from all over the world. I'm talking your fillies, kebabs, dumplings, cronuts, rainbow ice cream. It's all the things, and it can be found right now with a scroll of your Twitter feed, at ATL and Co. I actually pinned it to the top. Christine? 42 foods you need before you die or 42 foods that will kill Make you? Make you die, yes. Well, okay, but I mean, let's go one at a time. We'll, we'll tackle okay. it. <laughs> you know, the crazy ready? thing is, mm -hmm. I love um, queso, whatever the heck that, that's queso, queso, right? Correct. And I love a burger, but why? Mm -hmm. I did not like that. It was a deep like ball. It was a deep ball. Yes. It was a deep Ooh. ball. <laughs> but, in way far. but you know what? I actually had to make myself think of something because I was starting to get a little sick to my stomach. Right. And then okay. I realized that we got all of our Girl Scout cookie boxes oh, from nice. our neighbor, oh, fun. Paige. Girl Scout, yes. Yeah. Seven. Seven boxes are at my house. That's good. Hidden away strategically mm. from mm. Jim. Okay, yeah. will you remember where they're hidden? Or yes. will it be like a surprise under no, your pillow well, one night? Most of them minutes. probably oh. so. But yes, okay. you know what will go lovely with those Girl Scout cookies tonight? Some vino. Some vino. Mm -hmm. Will it? I think so. A little anyway. chocolate, little vino. Mm. That's right. From what glass of wine you should be drinking to your favorite pour, what area of the world makes the most barrels, mm. Kara is continuing our National Drink Wine Day celebration and things to care about. Cheers to you, my friend. Happy National Wine sparkling. Drinking Day. We're sparkling mm -hmm. right We're sparkling. now. Mm -hmm. This is wine, not champagne. Sparkling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. All right, let's start with what makes all wine glorious, and that's the grapes, okay? You may think of grapes as fruit, but they're not fruit, okay? Botanists technically classify grapes as berries. Do you want to know why? Ah. Because each fruit forms a single flower, and there are more than 8,000 grape varieties known to scientists, and more than 1,300 varieties that are currently used to make wine around the world, okay? So the grapes you see at the supermarket, known as table gra grapes, have a much thinner skin yes. and far more seeds than the varieties used to make wine. Right, if you've mm -hmm. gone to any vineyards and you've actually like pulled, pulled the grapes or looked at the grapes, or actually bitten what you'll see, I don't know how many of them let you actually sample. Okay, listen. Back in the day when I lived in Napa, right. we'd go, yeah, they, the skin is definitely tougher. I would just like to say, um, public service announcement, to anybody who is watching who works at a winery, who runs a winery, who Invite owns us? a winery, yeah. you should have the show there. We would love to do a whole yes. show there. We could spend the weekend. Delonica. There's, uh, there's some up north so in Delonica. That would be so fun. Round of applause for people yes. who want to make that happen. Yes, let's go on the road. Work. Okay, I yeah. would love Ooh. that. Yeah, okay. so right. learn a little bit more. Yes. Actually, I think it is so important because we do have mm. wineries white, white here. We have wineries <laughs> white here, and we would love to take advantage and yes. learn more about how to support these local vineyards, our local Georgia yes. winemakers. Exactly. Yes, please. Okay. Speaking of that, the next most important thing is color. Okay, so when fermenting red wine, winemakers usually include the skin and other parts of the fruit along with the wine juice, causing the wine to taste bolder, and it's also where it gets its deep body rich look that you're seeing right there. Okay, yes. white wines are made from mostly just the fruit juice. Right, I know. Mm -hmm. Jim won't drink white. He just is like, it's, str like it's it. straight sugar, he feels oh, like. okay. Yes. Isn't I really like a bit, I love a Chardonnay. I love like a buttery Chardonnay. Me I love too. a dry Chardonnay. A dry, yes. My mother loves, uh, what I know, does she like? Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc. Blanc. She loves that. I love so. getting jeans from Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> we will have that at my house from time to time. That's right. I don't, I'm not, I'm not discriminatory towards any type of I'm not of really. Wine. Although, I, I do feel like if it's, I'm, I'm really not attracted to sweeter me, flavors. Me neither. It just, me neither. <laughs> me neither. Yes. Okay. Uh, the next one is region. All right, so grapes grown in sandy soil usually produce less acidic, softer wines, and soils with a lot of clay produce wines with deep, bold flavors. Grapes grown in warmer climates, like Napa Valley, which is our biggest producer of wine here in the States, are usually more ripe when picked 
making for sweeter wines. Okay, grapes grown in cooler climates like the, the Chablis, Chablis region in France mm -hmm. will be tartar. Interesting. Now, if you come to my house for a glass of wine, I'd love to invite you all um, when I have a house again. I have these two huge maps that my were hung in my father's office because they um, ran a restaurant and my yes. parents were very into wine. And that map is actually, I don't know if you've ever taken a look at it, but it's actually like all the soil regions in Europe. And my mom often talks about how there are two parts of this road, right? And on one side of the road in France, in Burgundy, it, it produces the most expensive wines in the world. But on the other, other side, side of the road, because the soil is so different it produces like you know the not, uh, wine. yes no, like yeah but like but a 16th of the price of what just the wine is that's made from the other side of the road because the soil content is so much richer isn't that interesting that is so yeah. it, and that's the one when we went to Paris well we were trying to get a lot in on that Paris trip two years yes. ago but I would love to go to the Burgundy region yes I mean just really explore that just it's having lived in California and mm -hmm. have gone to Nap you know Napa right a few times I would love that yeah that's so interesting it's really cool Public service announcement. Okay. If you're watching and you, you own a vineyard in France, we would also like to go there. That's just okay? an idea. Yes. It's just a small, take the show. small road trip. We People take ask the us show. all the time, why are you taking the show on the road? <laughs> because you haven't invited us. You. And by please you, I mean do. those of you with a yes. vineyard. Yes. yes, please call us. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next one is how to taste. This is very important. Okay. Although winemakers will claim a wine has a certain flavor, like you may hear blueberries, citrus, even fun things like dirt and biscuits. Yeah. Ooh. Wines aren't yes. actually flavored with anything. Okay, the flavors come from the grapes and the process through which the grapes are then put through. Infused wines, meaning wines that have been mixed with other fruit juices, Ooh. are actually flavored. Right. Which I looked up because I was like, what's an infused wine? And then I was like, oh, it's obviously just when you add some fruit to a wine. And then oh. I found this recipe for like a mint raspberry wine, which sounded interesting, but also maybe not for me because it does sound like it'd be a little bit too sweet. Too but sweet. she says, yes. if you do do that to use a very dry dry wine and then add the fruit to it because the fruit will obviously make it very sweet tasting. Now, I went through a phase when I was living in California, uh -huh. Karen Soder home, if you're watching, mm -hmm. we were roommates, where we got on a sangria kick mm -hmm. until our friends said no more. We're not coming over sure. if you continue to serve sangria. I mean, I was like, <laughs> well, that... <laughs> That's pretty funny. I mean, rude, right? right? That's actually kind of rude. You get your wine and your servings of fruit for the it day. It was Emerald's recipe, which is phenomenal. Oh. It actually is a white and a red, but I guess we just went to town <laughs> every time. We're like, come over for more the bachelor and some sangria. Yeah. And then they were like, no more. Yeah. And they boycotted it. Oh. I've had sangria since. <laughs> oh my God. But I was just I think you bring love it back. a good sangria. That but again, nice. you can't have. It's got it, well, right. and then if you put the brandy in and depending sure. on, you know, then it won't be as sweet. Mm -hmm, but I could mm -hmm. I could have like two glasses. Yeah. Do you like um, some I bread? love it, yeah, I will never turn would you down. Would you nope. have some? Thank yes. you. I mean, yes, I would. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you, Karen. And if you happen to own a sangria factory, <laughs> <laughs> we, would, we would love to come you sample are, your wares. She is, so, look at Ebony <laughs> smiling on the side, like we're gonna get some invites. <laughs> we Thank are. You. No, you know what, Chateau Alain maybe might yes, ask us. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Chateau Alain, if you're listening. A weekend we're away. We're there, that's mm -hmm. right.